Hi 10th Kids, welcome back. I'm Pastor Annie and I'm so glad to be with you today. God is here with us too, so let's begin our worship service by lighting the candle. In the Bible, God's presence is often described as a fire or a flame. This flame will remind us that God is here with us as we learn about him today. Let's continue to look at the candle together at the flame. I wonder what you notice. Perhaps you notice the flame and the colors of the flame. Perhaps you notice the height of the flame or that it's moving. If I put my hands like this, I can feel the heat and the warmth of the flame. But I'm not gonna get too close because fire is very powerful. Last week, we read in our Jesus Storybook Bible that God spoke to Moses out of a burning bush. But the bush didn't burn up. It was not like this flame on this candle here, when, it, when eventually the candle will burn down. No, the bush that was burning didn't burn up. Only God can do that. And God was showing Moses his power. Now let's have a bit of fun. As we learn about God's power today, every time I say the word power or powerful, I want you to sign it in American Sign Language in ASL. Do you remember what the sign is for power? I wonder, it's a few weeks ago. Hmm, it goes like this. This is power. So remember, every time you hear the word power, I want you to make the sign with me, okay? So let's read more about God's rescue plan in our Jesus Storybook Bible. We left off right at the part when Moses was afraid. But God comforted him, saying, I will be with you. So this is where we left off, and we're gonna turn the page and read on. So Moses went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, Moses began. God says, God, said Pharaoh, never heard of him. Moses kept going. God says, let his people go free. Why should I? Pharaoh said. Don't want to, won't. So he didn't. So God gave Pharaoh 10 warnings called plagues. First, God turned the River Nile into blood. No one could drink the water, but still Pharaoh would not let them go. So God made frogs come hopping and leaping and jumping. In your bed frogs, in your hair frogs, in your soup frogs, all over everywhere frogs. Make them go away, Pharaoh screamed. Then your people can go. So God took the frogs away. But Pharaoh changed his mind. You can't go, he said. Then God sent zillions of gnats. But still Pharaoh said, no. So then God sent swarms of flies, flies buzzing in your eyes, flies. And after that, sickness <coughs> and horrible boils and huge hailstones and a storm of locusts, then darkness when it should have been day, until it seemed that the whole world creation and everything was coming undone, falling back into darkness and emptiness and nothingness. But each time Pharaoh said, make it stop and I'll let them go. And each time when God made it stop, Pharaoh changed his mind and said, actually, no, you can't go. Finally, Moses warned Pharaoh, Obey God or he will have to send the worst thing of all. Pharaoh just laughed. So God said, The oldest boy in each family of Egypt must die, but my people will be safe. God told his people to take their best lamb, 
to kill it and put some of its blood on their front doors. When God passes over your house, Moses explained, God will see the blood and know that the lamb died instead of you. That night, it was just as God had said. Suddenly, piercing the darkness, echoes down the corridors of the palace came a blood-curdling scream. Pharaoh's oldest son had died. And at last, Pharaoh did just what God said. Get out, Pharaoh shouted, just go. And so that very night, Moses and God's people fled out of Egypt and out of slavery. They were free at last. God's people would always remember this great rescue and call it Passover. But an even greater rescue was coming. Many years later, God was going to do it again. He was going to come down once more to rescue his people. But this time, God was going to set them free forever and ever. Wow, what a rescue. I wonder why God sent so many warnings. Why do you think God sent 10 warnings? Hmm. Perhaps he was showing Pharaoh and the Egyptians and everyone that he is God and he has power over everything. Or perhaps God was also giving Pharaoh chance after chance after chance to change his mind and set the Israelites free. In the end, Pharaoh realized that he couldn't stand up against God. He couldn't continue to hold the Israelites as slaves and continue to make them suffer. God had done it. He set his people free and rescued them from slavery. Now, I wonder if you have ever felt like you need rescuing. Perhaps when you were learning to swim, or perhaps when you were learning to ride a bike. It can be really scary in the water when you can't swim yet, or it can be a bit scary when you feel like the bike might wobble and you might fall off. But when you're floating in your parents' arms in the pool, or when you know your bike is being held by someone you trust, you feel safe, don't you? And you're safe in God's hands too, because he is good and he is powerful. And he has your life in his hands. So you don't have to be afraid. He will rescue you and he'll always be with you. Now let's talk to God together using our teaspoons. Do you remember these from last week? I wonder if you have them. If you want to, you can pause the video and go and grab them. I'll be right here when you get back. Okay, let's pray together. Let's start with the thank you teaspoon. And we say thank you to God for some things. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your amazing power. Amen. Okay, and let's say sorry. The S stands for sorry. And we're sorry when we do the wrong thing and we ask God to forgive us. Dear God, I am sorry for when I used your power in the wrong way. Amen. And the last teaspoon, P, is for please. And we're going to ask God, we can ask him for anything because he's powerful and he can do anything. We just need to ask and hear what he has to say. Dear God, please help me trust you when I need rescuing. Amen. Now let's head over to our activity corner. Hi kids, I'm Grace, the new preschool pastor at our Mount Pleasant site. This is the time to pull out your activity boxes. Your activity box has materials that will help you with your weekly activities. If you don't have one yet, you can ask your parents to register for yours today. Just go to 10th.ca slash activity box. You can also print your own materials at home and gather supplies yourself, whatever is easier for you and your family. In our Bible story today, God showed us his power by rescuing the Israelites from slavery. 
to help us remember what that might look like, let's see how much power soap has. For today's activity, you're gonna need a shallow plate, a cotton swab, some whole milk, and a bit of food coloring. If you have a few different colors, that would work really well. And a small cup of dish soap. Feel free to pause the video while you gather your materials. Okay, are you guys ready? First, very carefully pour enough milk to cover the bottom of the plate. Ask an adult in your home to help you with this. It can be tricky and you don't want to end up with milk all over your table or floor. Squeeze a bit of dish soap into this little cup. You don't need too much, just a little bit. An adult can help you with this too. So, prepared. Next, add a few drops of food coloring to your milk. Use any colors you like and make sure you use liquid food coloring for the best effect. Each dot can remind us of something powerful God sent to Egypt, like frogs and gnats. We're gonna use the yellow one first. Okay, and then now I'm gonna use the red one. Okay, I'm gonna put some here. And lastly, we're gonna put some green food coloring. I love Okay. Now let's see what happens when we poke the dots with our cotton swab. Just dip it straight in, but try not to wiggle it around. Hmm. Nothing really happens. Let's try something else. Dip the other clean side of the cotton swab into the little cup with soap in it. Then poke the dots of the color on the plate and gently touch the tip of the cotton swab to the color and see what happens. Like this. Whoa, that was really cool. Let's do that again. Let's do it with the green one. Whoa, this is super fun. Isn't this beautiful? Remember to not touch the milk with your fingers because the color might stain them. So look at this, the soap was so powerful. It made the color swirl and move around. God showed his power by covering Egypt with things like bugs and frogs and darkness. People saw God's power then, and like we could see the soap making the colors move around, that reminds us that God doesn't change and his power for us today is the same as it was back then. He always, he's always in charge and will help us, even when life seems all mixed up and out of control. Well, that's all for me today. I hope you have fun. Now let's sign and sing our memory verse together. Hi friends and welcome to ASL Memory Verse Time. My name is Dan, D-A-N, and I'm here with my two good friends today. This is my friend, Emilia, E-M-E-L-I-A. Perfect, and this is my friend, Evie. Let's spell, spell your name in ASL, Evie. It's E-V-I-E, -E. Evie. And all three of us are here today to help all of us learn about the heart of God. Friends, what's the sign for heart again? Heart. Heart, that's right. A middle finger right to your chest. The heart of God. Remember the sign for God? That's right. Hand straight up and straight down. The heart of God. And in our first series, we're gonna learn about the heart of God being 
Good. What's the sign for good? That's right, a flat hand from your chin, right to your other hand. Good. The heart of God is good. For today's verse, first we're going to say it, and then we're going to sign it. Here we go. Psalm 145.9 The Lord is good to all. He shows deep concern for everything he has made. Okay, now let's try and sign it. The Lord. What's the sign for Lord? Lord. That's right, letter L, like a sash on your body. The Lord. The Lord is good. We just did the sign. That's right, the Lord is good to all. The Lord is good to all. He shows deep concern. What's the sign for concern? That's right, Amelia. Middle fingers right on your chest. Kind of like the sign for heart. Concern for everything. There's a sign for everything, that's right. Everything for everything he has made. It's time for made again, friends. That's right, two fists twisting together. Everything he has made. Okay, now let's try and put it all together. You ready? Here we go. The Lord is good to all. He shows deep concern for everything he has made. Psalm 145, 9. Okay, that was great, friends. Thanks. It's good to, to learn about the heart of God together. We'll see you next time. Bye, friends. Hi, 10th Kids. I'm Pastor Jeff, and here's a memory verse song for you. The Lord is good to all. He shows deep concern for everything He has made. The Lord is good to all. He shows deep concern for everything He has made. Psalm 145, 145, 145. Verse 9, Psalm 145, 145, 145, verse 9, the heart of God is good. The Lord is good to all, He shows deep concern for everything He has made. The Lord is good to all, He shows deep concern for everything He has made. Psalm 145, 145, 145, verse 9, Psalm 145, 145, 145. Verse 9, the heart of God is good. See you next time. That was excellent, 10th Kids. Was that fun? I bet it looked like a lot of fun. Now that we've learned our memory verse for this series, I want you to go ahead and stick your sticker into your activity book. Okay, so if you need to pause the video and go and find your sticker and book, you can do that now. And once you've got it, I want you to peel your sticker off its backing and I want you to turn to the first page of your activity book and I want you to put your sticker right on top of where it says good, on top of the chain, because God is good. Thanks for joining me today, 10th Kids. And as we go, let's remember that God is powerful and that he uses his power for our good. Bye, 10th Kids. See you next time.